Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. It is your creative, weird, creepy makeup artist friend Cat Sketch to bring you another makeup transformation. Today is going to be a creepy collab video where we do a skull inspired makeup while telling some creepy stories about bodies being found. You can subscribe to this channel if you want to see more really creative, interesting makeup looks while hearing about creepy and really insane stories that I tell while doing so and applying the makeup to my face because there is Halloween year round on this YouTube channel. So I hope you stick around. So just a little warning for some of you that may be squeamish, just warning you now, we're going to be talking about the dead, some creepy stories that may make you squeamish with blood, guts, and bodies. So I'm telling you now. And today's video is a collab with none other than Gabriel Dreams on Instagram who is on Instant Influencer. The talent in this makeup look is outstanding. So definitely check out Gabriel's Instagram, YouTube. All Gabriel's links will be in the info box down below in the YouTube description. But you should definitely stick around and check out this spooky skull inspired makeup transformation. I want to do a pumpkin jack liner being cracked open to expose a skull since we're talking about creepy bodies being found. So let's get started. So this first person's creepy story that I found about bodies being found is a person that goes to a university. They used to spend late night hours staying at the university working on projects till around 2 a.m. in the morning, which is highly dangerous unless you're with a group of people. But even then, like, that's super dangerous. Watch out. Where after 2 a.m. they would have to go for a walk around the university. The city that they had their university at had excellent footpaths, meaning that they could walk in a straight road from any of the classes, which had bridges and underpass systems for them to walk through. So one night this person was out late because their project wasn't like compiling or something, and they were walking through one of the underpass entrances, and they thought they saw a glove at one of the entrances of the underpasses that they walk through all the time at night. And as they looked further inside, they saw something what looked like reused sacks or like reused bags, but something fell off and wrong. You should always listen to your gut. So being a 20 year old who thought they were just indestructible, that weird things wouldn't happen to them, they went looking inside this weird underpass with reusable bags and gloves suspiciously at night. And they found that the gloves was a suspicious actual hand of a person and that the bags, reusable bags, were actually, you know, just bodies. And apparently when she called the police, she was past the deadline to call the police or something. So her clothes were considered evidence towards whatever crime was being committed of finding these bodies. Oh my gosh. At least the university gave her an extra day to complete the project that she was, of course, getting late for. And she was there at the school late for. Imagine you just happen across a body and then your clothes become evidence. This one just starts off with found a body in the woods. And they went back to where they found the body with the sheriff to report the missing body that they'd found because it wasn't hard to locate. It was like near a small cave apparently. But when they went back, there was no body remaining. That's suspicious. So the sheriff that's with him goes into the said cave and starts to back out. He told the person to slowly walk out of the area and not come back there. The sheriff told the person that first discovered the body that. Turns out that the sheriff had found tracks in the stool samplings, meaning poo, of a lion. A mountain lion to be exact. And it just so happened that the mountain lion not only eaten the human, but dragged said human's remains away from the site right before in time that this person first discovered the body. And I guess it did all this dragging and all this mischief, the mountain lion, while he was away looking for the sheriff. And it's just so weird that he probably just like, in the nick of time, got out of being endangered of being this lion's next victim. At a university, this person and their friend found a mutual friend's body in a water reservoir park on campus or near campus. They didn't know it was them, their friend that they knew at the time. 
But since this body that they found was face down and bloated, they had called 911 and just gave their statements to the sheriff that had arrived. They also mentioned that they hadn't seen that friend the whole entire day and that the friend, of course, wasn't returning their texts, messages, or phone calls, and now they know why. And later, of course, the sheriffs confirmed that that was actually their friend that they couldn't, you know, hear from with the text messages or phone calls. So sad. And Matt, I can't even imagine that. Like not hearing from your friend all day and then you see something that crazy and realize it's the friend that you're trying to get a hold of. So this next person lives in South Africa and they say that crime is definitely not new to them. They say it's a daily thing that they just kind of learn to live with, sadly. They said that when they were 15, their older cousin was going through a divorce, much older cousin. Her cousin and her two boys fled from a very abusive husband and moved 1,300 kilometers away from him, which, again, pardon, I am a U.S. United States person who knows nothing about kilometers or math that well, so excuse my knowledge. But they moved this distance to be closer with their family. He ended up following her out of town and moved in a small house and rented it from someone that their family knew. The ex-husband did, and he was threatening her and the kids daily. Not good. So this person picked up the cousin, the wife of the family, so that they could pick up her sons from school one day. But when they walked into the school to pick up the sons, the teacher had told them that the father had collected the children before they arrived. So of course the mother completely freaked out, drove straight to the police station from the school, and actually had to beg the police. Apparently in South Africa, they said sometimes you had to beg police to actually help the situation. So they drove to that father's home with the two police officers. When they arrived, an older lady was there and she was banging on the door saying that she hadn't heard from her son who owns the apartment in days and her son's car wasn't there and she knew something wasn't right. And apparently they have talked to the neighbors at this point of the apartment and the neighbors have said that they heard noises of fighting and that they heard just awful things in that there was an awful smell coming from inside the apartment. So once they got inside and broke the door down, they found the guy that they was looking for, but he was living with bodies that were, you know, not alive anymore, rolled up into carpets. This person says that they still remember tops of heads sticking out above from the rugs. They found the husband that afternoon and the victims in the car. And her two boys were thankfully unharmed, so who were the victims in the carpets? Apparently the victims might have been people that he used their credit cards to rent a car from because he knew that people were going to be after him because of the kids. What? Insane. So this next person just came along someone that had flipped their Harley motorcycle, motorcycle, motorcycle. I cannot say that word for the life of me. It was awful. There was brains on the person's face. And this person know that he had victim on this motorcycle had instantly died from whatever accident that they had been in. This person had been fortunately riding with a doctor. So they had actually stopped to uh, render and put um, emergency services onto to investigate any victims that might need help from the doctor. Apparently, this person's girlfriend was riding in a separate car and she was screaming because she knew what had happened to her boyfriend on the motorcycle. And at least that night, she, this person felt so bad for the girlfriend and was just trying to be there for her. And it was at this point that they knew that they weren't afraid of blood and guts all of a sudden because this person was trying to, you know, help the girlfriend out to calm down. And the worst part about this whole accident was that it happened on Thanksgiving Day. Gosh, that would like ruin Thanksgiving for me personally, because that's all I would think about. That that person could have been like spending time with the, their family, eating turkey dinner. This next person has walked in on their grandma's body. What? I feel like these stories are getting worse. Apparently, their grandmother was killed, murdered, the day before Mother's Day, and she had gone there 
to help her grandmother set up for Mother's Day with the family. And it still haunts this person to this day. Apparently this person found a homeless guy who had burned himself alive in the woods. This homeless man had built a tent in the woods and he decided to build a fire as well, but it was just too close to his tent and accidents happen and this was a very unfortunate accident at that. This person often goes back to the area where it happened and it surprised them how long it took people to take down the campsite where all this accident and terrible fire with this person had happened at. It took them forever to take it down. So this next person's friend had recently joined the police. This female officer, she had gone through all of her training. In her first week out on the job, she gets a call from neighbors complaining or just saying that they hadn't seen their neighbor in over a week. And it was a man, their neighbor, who was really close to the community, so it was really suspicious. So they get a spare key off of one of the neighbors who's actually the last person to see this guy up alive in his house, out and about. And when they entered the home, it was definitely very warm, like suspiciously warm. And it turns out all the windows were shut and all the heaters were on in the home full blast. The police go into the front living room and this guy was passed out on his couch face down. He had been molded to the couch and his skin was even melted to the fabric of this couch. The guy was literally mush and it turns out the guy that had let them in was the one that killed him. Yes, the neighbor friend who he trusted enough to give the spare key to. What? You need to watch out who you give your spare key to your home to. Like, excuse me? That's just insane to me. What a twisted plot. So the neighbor that had done this actually turned all the heaters on himself with the windows closed so that when forensics came in to try to find evidence on the person's body, it would all be melted off and destroyed. This is why it's hard for me to trust people. And it wasn't until this guy, the neighbor that had let them in with the spare key, his backstories to where he was, his alibi just was not adding up when they realized they have the man that did this crime. So this next person was in an area called Drumheller, whatever place this was, and they were out there hiking with two of their cousins when they found a chopped head. Like seriously, imagine just being with your family and then finding that. As soon as they saw it, they said, let's not go follow this trail because both cousins saw it at the same time as they were just pointing to the head. So they just hiked back to their campsite and grabbed the nearest security person they could find. And they took the security person back to where that they had found it. And the security guy apparently had some questions for them. Of course, you have to be interrogated. Like I know what this is about and what it is like to find, and I don't. How to find a body, I don't. And they left pretty shortly after that and haven't been back since to that camp hike retreat place. I don't blame them. So this next one's in Russian, and they're like, of course we've seen some crazy things in Russia. Apparently when they were in the third grade, they found a dead body next to their school. Why? Apparently the guy had been in an apartment building near the school on the fifth floor and had just stumbled to his death. And the classmates were so calm about it, they're like, ha ha, did you see that dead guy outside? I would not be so amused and calm even as a kid in the third grade. I don't know about you guys. And apparently when they were cleaning up leaves on the school grounds, they had also found a deceased hobo underneath the leaves. And these kids actually didn't care about that either. Like are Russian school kids just like more stronger with death than Americans are? I don't know. Cause I feel like, I don't know. Although schools have changed a lot since I've been in school. I'm gonna do a little shadowing in detail and I'll be back. And we are back, completely done with this, but we need a hat, duh. Of course we do. And with that, we are completely turned into the skull appearing in your jack-o'-lantern on Halloween. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely check out Gabriel, who I collab with on this makeup today. Definitely check out Gabriel's bloody skull look. 
because Gabriel's also doing makeup every single day in the month of October. It's outstanding. Links will be down below in the description box along with everything I used in this video for products. This makeup was honestly so much fun to do. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and hearing all the spooky tales of bodies found. I can't wait for Halloween as you could tell. I love that this makeup look has so many angles that you can look at it from. That's so interesting since the jack liner is cracked open to release the skull. This would make a fabulous Halloween idea. Unless you're sweating a lot, it would be hard. Unless you use Final Seal by Ben Nye. Maybe you could do it. I think you can. So subscribe because I do videos every Monday and Friday here on this channel. Halloween is year round here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Weird to have a normal hand.